We have the latest on Brian Danielson's orbital bone injury and if the thing is real or not. We have news of some potential hot and fresh free agents on the wrestling scene right now. And Ronda Rousey's taking indie bookings. Find out more about them in a little tickle. The big breaking news this Monday morning, of course, Jack, you were there. It's Tuning Point Impact Wrestling on Friday. How did he do? How did I do? How did he do? Which Tim. One? Tim. Tim Campbell. Oh, Tom. Yeah, he did well. <laughs> he did well. Um, I, I got a nice photo of him with the, the broadest smile ever seen in really? the middle of the ring. Yeah, he was having a great time. The broadest smile ever seen. Anyway, yeah. we go from a very broad smile to an unhappy situation because on Saturday's AEW collision, Claudio Castanoli revealed that Brian Danielson had broken his orbital bone, which was made famous by The Undertaker in the 90s when a large man sat on his face. Yes. Um, <laughs> and I remember thinking at the time, at the end of that match when he's he's rolling around selling and he's being checked on and everything, and I remember thinking, oh, this is quite convincing, which it turns out is because it was possibly quite real possibly quite real yeah it was the match between the BCC Castanoli and Danielson versus Okada and Orange Cassidy on Wednesday's Dynamite I thought it was a potential for an angle because Okada was just stood over Danielson laughing at a man in peril which I thought that might be setting up a match for a future between those two Danielson of course took a punch an orange punch and a rainmaker to the face in that match and was tended to the, uh, by the medical staff on the apron while Okada laughed him as I said Tony Schiavone then later noted on collision at the weekend there that Danielson will need surgery and will be out for the rest of the air, even though, as I say, it looked like it could have been an injury, but that's all gone now. Or an angle. Or an um, angle. Oh, well, yeah. Why? Yeah, <laughs> but it does look like it's an injury. And I think that maybe Okada's just thought really quickly on his feet there and mm. thought, I can set up something potentially, because they obviously had that match, which Danielson won by submission, which is rare against Okada. So I was always assuming they were going to build towards a rematch at some point, which Okada would presumably win. So maybe he's thinking, even if Brian's injured here, I'll try and remind everyone that this rematch could be in the works. We'll get there eventually, he's probably thinking to himself. Anyway, Brian Alvarez has the latest update on the injury posting on x.com to his subscribers. I don't have it 100% confirmed, but he was hurt for sure on Wednesday. He had a black eye, he had an MRI scheduled for his orbital bone, so I'm pretty much certain their story is legit. Yeah. So it's a really real one. And it's his second injury in quick succession as well, because in that match that we just mentioned against Okada at Forbidden Door, that's obviously where he suffered his broken arm. Many people think it's from the elbow drop, I think, that Okada yeah. gave him. Um, and then he made his return at All Out, obviously, beating Ricky Starks in that strap match, uh, and hasn't really missed a beat since until this injury. Uh, off the back of this as well, Claudio will now face Orange Cassidy for the international title on Wednesday's Dynamite. My immediate thoughts upon seeing this news this morning was about Birdie B, Brian Danielson's daughter, Birdie, who Brian Danielson promised when she turned seven, he would then start a wrap of his professional wrestling career. Have these two injuries postponed that retirement? Or have they convinced him that maybe it'll be sooner than... It could be any. Or that, yeah. Or it could be either way, but one thing about wrestlers is that they really love wrestling Mm. and they find it hard... Well, a lot of them find it quite hard to let go. Yeah. And when you're one of the best ever, it's probably even harder to let go. But what Birdie B wants, Birdie B gets. I don't know what I'm calling that, Birdie B. Birdie B. Birdie B, (laughs) up the Birdie B. (laughs) (laughs) Right, now onto those hot and fresh potential free agents that are hitting the wrestling scene in the not-too-distant future. Alex Hammerstone is the first name we're coming to. He confirmed via his social media that he's asked to be released from his MLW contract by saying, my time with MLW was five of the best years of my life and career. Very proud of what I and the company accomplished. Uh, I wish them continued success. I have recently asked for my release as I feel it was what's right for me at this time. Thank you, Court Bauer, for the opportunities. Hammerstone has been removed from MLW's roster page, but uh, per a report from Fightful Select, apparently the company does not intend to let this massive blonde man go. Well, he's been a key player for them as well. He's been uh, a 644 day MLW World Heavyweight Champion champion and an 854 day or combined day reign I suppose as the company's national open weight champion as well so I guess it would make sense that they wouldn't want to lose their major I find MLW a bit of a weird place in the wrestling landscape right because it seems to be it does well for itself and everything but the wrestlers that it's got on its roster don't seem to are they on exclusive deals I don't know team, how it works they Jack. don't seem to crop up in many other places compared to other promotions of a similar size yeah it felt like a couple of years ago and they were getting like TV deals and stuff and there was the, the, the lawsuit and all that sort of things yeah, like, wow yeah. this must be a power player in the world of wrestling but I don't know anyway interestingly about Alex Hammerstone Court Bauer was asked about him back in the day by Bus and Urban Radio give me his full title by the way Court Bauer CEO of MLW LLC in brackets ML 
Mel Dummery, the founder and promoter of Major League Wrestling. That's a lovely title there for him. Uh, Hammerstone's had a couple of tryouts with the WWE in the past, but Colt Bauer revealed, in the, this is a direct quote, Hammerstone went for a few tryouts and was told, you look too much like Triple H. Now, we were just talking to Owen off camera before we came on here, and, and you and Owen both agreed. He doesn't look... Like it's more him. Thor, isn't it, just with the blonde hair? I guess we're going all the way back to 90s and you get the, the perma out. Yeah. The perma? What they call the curler? Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. The thing that Triple yeah. H used to use when he was terrorising. Anyway, that would suggest that maybe a future in WWE isn't on the cards, just based off what's gone previous. But then again, we've had several superstars down the years who have had numerous tryouts before getting signed yeah. and hitting the big time. And also, Cole Bauer said this back in May in that interview with Busted Open Radio, but I don't know if he specified well, this could have been ages ago when yeah. Alex Hammerstein. It could have been when Triple H was far more of a key factor in ring, whereas obviously now he's retired from wrestling. So maybe, maybe it'd be a more, even if they still think he looks like Triple H, Maybe they'd be more open to having him on now. Yeah. And also, Fightful Select reported over the weekend that Lance Anoa'i has requested his release from MLW as well. Anoa'i is also, just like Hammerstone, not listed on the promotion's roster page. And awkward turtle shaky palm tree, while Hammerstone's uh, release request hasn't been granted, this one has. Mm, He said on uh, Lance Anoa'i himself said on Twitter or on X, as of today, I have been granted my MLW release. I want to thank MLW. want to give a big shout out to my Usos Finau and Jacob Fatu thank you for everything love you guys hashtag SST Uh, he was alongside Finau the MLW World Tag Team Champion I should note as well that Finau has also been granted his release from the company as well he's a big boy I I just never know (laughs) because obviously the the lazy assumption to make is that whenever a prominent member of the Anawai family is released from their indie contract they're going to end up in the bloodline immediately get in the bloodline straight away Solo Sokoa has made it work Who's to say that his relatives can't do it as well? Yeah, this is Samu's son, by the way, uh, Lance Anawai, and his cousins with Roman Reigns, obviously the Usos as well. He appeared on Dirty Programming back in 2019, putting over a young and upcomer in the business known as Shane McMahon. Oh. So he's got a great pedigree in the ring for spotting talent and putting them over. I can't remember Shane McMahon wrestling like a squash or like a... It uh, might be like a Raw Underground segment or something like yeah, that. I don't know, which is listed on Cage Match, uh, wasn't it? Anyway, we have news of Ronda Rousey taking indie bookings. Well, I never. She made a shoot appearance last week, didn't she, Jack? And now her first appearance for a certain wrestling revolver at their Unreal event, which is a very Northeast title for their pay-per-view, has been, been confirmed now. Yes, uh, which, I, first of all, I'm quite relieved for her because... That MMA rules fight thing she had with Shayna Baszler at SummerSlam. If that was her last match ever, I would have felt quite sad for her because yeah. it, I don't think it. I, I don't think it's either of their fault, but I don't think it went the way either of them would have hoped either. Long show in the middle of the card. Yeah. I forget what match took place before them, but there was those cues, wasn't there, for the bogs mm. that were really long. Yes. Uh, on Saturday, Wrestling Revolver revealed that Ronda would wrestle at their November 16th show in Los Angeles on Sunday. Uh, they confirmed that she would team with, as Ross has put here, her four horse lady stablemate, yes. Marina Shafir. Uh, but their opponents haven't yet been named. Yeah, all profits from this show are going to the Lahaina Wildfire Relief. I think I've said that Fair right. Enough. And it's also a show that will feature names like oh John word. Moxley, Swerve Strickland, Alex Shelley, Speedball Mike Bailey, and actor Paul Walter Hauser, who was that man from A. AEW, who had his award stolen oh, by... Was it, was it an Emmy or something? Yeah. Who was it stolen by? Uh, was it Swerve? I want to say it was... Um, Prince Nanar? What's he called? Dan Lambert's stable. But ah. I, can't, I can't quite remember that. You could be right. But uh, he's also, I think, the janitor in Cobra Kai. <laughs> if you've watched Cobra Kai, he's he's Stingray. Oh, Stingray. Yeah, that's his... Nickname, Fantastic yeah. submarine yeah. back in the day. Anyway, Rose, uh, Ronda Rousey and Marina Shafir wrestled an impromptu match at Lucha Vavoom mm. on Thursday. This is the parents I was uh, re- mentioning a bit earlier on. They defeated the team of Brian Kendrick and Taya Valkyrie. <coughs> what a randomizer of a match that it is. It was, yes. Uh, and that was the um, first match, obviously, since Jack right. said the, the Shayna Baszler match at SummerSlam. I've, I'm shocked to see Ronda Rousey uh, take an indie book. And it's not just because, you know, it's Ronda Rousey, but also because she hates us. She hates us wrestling fans. <laughs> So it's giving something back to the business. It's a bit of a shock. I thought that she would, um, if she ever came back, it would just be back to on a bit of a Lesnar thing, like just back to WWE sporadically. But mm. no, she's actually doing the indies. Um, what was I going to talk about? Oh yeah, I was going to mention uh, Turning Point. Yeah. And how, so Tom did really well, as we've said. But also, uh, Joe Henry wrestled Simon Miller. Mm-hmm. Fantastic match. Uh, I got worked by Simon Miller, big star. How? He was he was the heel. He's cutting a promo before the match. 
He goes, oh, you're just jealous that I've made more money than you off YouTube. Yeah, I am, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're, we're in the balcony going, no, you can't say that. Um, then he drops the mic accidentally and everyone boos him and goes, woo. And I saw him after, after the show and I was like, Oh, the mic drop actually worked out really well because it got you heat. And he was like, yeah, man, a lot of people thought that was real. And I was like, oh, yeah, marks, oh, idiots. God. Bloody hell. Up the miller. I yeah. think, is that a spoiler? Should we put a spoiler warning on the thing? When's it get released, the show? Oh, damn it. We'll put a thing on. Owen, put a thing before Jack starts talking. I didn't say who won the match. Yeah. But Miller dropped the microphone. It's the biggest Watch out that for happened him dropping all night. the microphone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, come back later for news video two. I've been Ross, joined by Jack. Well done, Ronda Rousey, for helping your friend. Mm. I don't know what I'm doing now. Yeah, that's good. <laughs>